Oh, good job. Ong I got the promise to be a big, a, a good boy now. <laughs> ສະໄສຮູບນີ້ໂດຍຊ្នេះເພື່ອໄປ <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. We're grateful for the extra time. Mr. Schamberg, I hope you can hear us. I think I heard your voice just Thank you. If I can just continue on, on this topic we just discussed about um, the discipline of Khmer Rouge soldiers and people that you observed. Uh, we have a on the case file a US a copy of a US cable which is essentially a summary of an article that you wrote uh, in September 1975. This is document E3 slash 3355. E3 slash 335. Uh, it's dated, um, the press summary itself is dated 18th of September 1975. Uh, I'm going to give the relevant ERNs and then I'll, I'll read a brief passage to you. Uh, in, in Khmer, this is found at 0074897 and the page is following. In French, 0071938, and in English, 0041300. It's essentially a U United States State Department's summary uh, of an article that you uh, there is attributed to you. Uh, and um, as I said, it's dated 18th of September 1975. I'm only interested in a brief. Again, a brief passage here. Quote. Notes little info available on Khmer communist hierarchy. Says KR soldiers, peasant boys, but officers educated could speak French. End of quote. This is one of the documents, of course, that we sent you, Mr. Chambers. Um, is that an observation that you made uh, in relation to Khmer Rouge officers apparently being more educated and being able to speak French? Yes, it is. Because, uh, I mean, I, I heard them speaking French when we were in the embassy. Uh, were there any other uh, features of their uh, behavior or uniform or their conduct that um, gave you the impression that they were educated people? Uh, I, didn't, uh, I didn't have a lot of contact with them. But, the contact I did have made me uh, 
were held there for a period of time. Did you observe uh, officers and their behavior there? Or were there any officers? Yes. The officers were having lunch. My assistant and brother he kept going up to these officers and saying that we weren't Americans, that we were Canadians, uh, uh, and we just, we're, we are he, that we're here to record their victory. Uh, and, and then he was speaking in Khmer, and most of his ladies, and then he also said to the officers on the radio this morning, one of your generals said that the press could uh, operate to, you know, today and uh, we will not come. And so these officers having their lunch finally gave him his promise very persuasive and said, Cranston, let me go to the so-and-so building where your, uh, your headquarters, temporary headquarters is now. And let me go there with one of your officers and ask the question. Reporters, how are reporters to be treated? They said yes. So he got on, they got an officer who was known as Psycho, on the back. They went to the building. And it was something like 20 minutes later or 30 minutes later, Kron comes back and we're free. But the whole time, the young man pointed at us. And all three of us, uh, Rockoff, myself, John Swain, were certain that this was it. And, I mean, uh, Prawn is a very interesting subject, and, but, but probably not for this uh, tri tribunal. But he saved our lives. Uh, he was a great man. He died a few years ago. Uh, he believed in peace. And he suffered badly under the Khmer Thank you. I, I, I'm going to apologize to you for interrupting you. Um, I know it's important. I've gone off track, but in any case, it was something that stayed, will stay with me all my life. And so that is where I saw these men who finally listened to uh, his plea and let us go. Thank you. Um, just to explore very briefly aspects of that event, um, as I said, we don't have a lot of time uh, to, to explore it extensively. Uh, only a couple of aspects uh, are of interest for present purposes. Uh, in your diary, you provide a, a, a detailed descript description of this. It starts on page 68. There is one particular, again, one, one aspect of the story. Um, this is 
page 68, English ERN 0089 8276, where you describe uh, the conversation between Diff Pran and, and the, uh, the soldiers that had captured you. Quote, the insurgents had told him to take off. We don't want you, they said. We only want the big ones. But Pran knew we would be lost without him, so he talked his way onto the carrier. It was a supreme act of courage and loyalty, and it saved our lives. Those words, we don't want you, we want only the big ones. How did you hear those words? Were they conveyed to you by Dith Pran or was it uh, otherwise? He, uh, and I can't think of, he, he told me at the time the word, the Khmer word for the big boys, but I can't remember it now. Uh, and, uh, and I, I watched it. Kept arguing and, uh, uh, it, armored, it was an armored personnel carrier they were driving. And, and I didn't know what he was arguing for, because they were, they were holding guns to our heads. And, uh, and I thought, my God, you know, if he doesn't stop it, you know, bothering them, we're going to get killed. So, uh, eventually, he got on with us. And I asked him, inside the armored personnel carrier, I said, why, you know, why did you do that? He said, I knew that without me, you were going to get killed. And I said, thank you. And that's all. Thank you. Um, did you ask him, or was it at any point uh, explained uh, what these words, the big ones, meant? Well, the big ones are, he, they probably thought we were all Americans. Thank you. Moving on to another aspect of the event, um, where you describe two Cambodian men being pushed inside the, the, the carrier in which you were, you were detained. Uh, it's on the same page. Um, and you say that they are dressed in civilian clothes, but it soon becomes clear they are military men. One of them, a large fat man with a mustache in a T-shirt and Levi's, reached behind me and tries to shave or I guess shove his wallet in my back pocket. He explains in French that he is an officer and must hide his identity. Now, just because it's also a description of the same event, uh, can we take a look at page 64 of the Killing Fields book? And this is at English ERN 00862598. So it's your page 64, Mr. Schamberg. Oh, I, I do apologize. This is actually at page 60, 62, not 64. 62 for this uh, passage. You say the following, quote, they stopped once to pick up two men, both in civilian clothes, one of whom we knew as the number two in command of the small Khmer Navy. The Khmer Rouge clearly knew who they were, and I thought to myself, these men are going to be executed. Can I ask you, um, is, is that an accurate uh, account of, of uh, your knowledge at the time that this, one of the individuals was uh, a deputy commander of the Navy of the Khmer Republic? Yes, I didn't know any, uh, uh, right away. I knew it only after we were released. And and uh, those two men were still under guard. Uh, they, were not, they were not released. 
Bộ kê từng tí ăn rô bàn rô lê tê Nhưng mình chăm rừng đau tầng sông tê Còn chơi dìm ôi cổ bông Còn nóng mộc nhóm Và cổ bông đã lưu còn mọi cổ nhóm I'm in the same boat that he is. Uh, they start to use that no more. And uh, so giving it to me isn't going to help. And we ended up stuffing it under uh, the sand bag on the floor. Of the young person I'll carry. Got no. When we were released, we were sitting outside this uh, on the sidewalk. Bộ kê ông quay nở lờ trên trạng phá lâu Đại liên quan tốt dìm càng bộ kê Dương từng hóa bê nâng Bạn đừng Thay dương mình hai chui giấy đó bộ kê Bị nâng nâng bàn nâng kê được chứ nâng dương có đau chê nâng Nâng cứ chờ bởi vậy thì vì Cát là nó không nâng bê sân kê Nhưng mà nâng bàn tê Còn tên nhưng mà nâng bàn tê Còn tên nhưng mà nâng bàn tê Còn tên nâng bàn tê Hey, Jung, go chat, Jung. Thank you. And it probably has nothing to do with this, with with your question, but I. It was a powerful day. I'm sure it was, Mr. Schamberg. Do you recall by any chance the name of this individual, the Deputy Commander of the Khmer Navy, and do you know anything as to what happened to him afterwards? I have no... I have no information of my own. And all I could do would be to guess. Yeah, and, and that's fine. We'll, we'll, stop, we'll stop there. We want to ask you to um, I'm going to move on now to the events that essentially followed your release. But before I do that, by way of context, um, I want to ask you about a particular passage of your book where you describe um, Lon, Non, Lon Nol and his plans to flee Phnom Penh. This will be relevant for the subsequent questions I'm going to ask you. It's at page 22 of the diary. And this is ERN 00898230, so page 22 of the diary. Very short passage. You say the following quote, and I should say it's, it's dated the, the 5th of March, this entry. Quote, Rumors have crept up again that Lon Nol may soon go into exile. He is one of the seven, quote, traitors, end of quote, whom the insurgents have marked for execution. Can I ask you first what you knew uh, about the, uh, this um, these seven traders and what, what was the source of that information that they'd been marked for execution? Well, occasionally, statements. They they had called them the seven traders. And they were to be they were to be killed. And they kept repeating that. And uh, not all of them were killed because because uh, Lon Nol indeed did go and, uh, left the country with his family and the million dollars of the American government and a few years later. But, uh, 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 that's, that's what that is all about. Thank you. Uh, if, if I could um, 
if I could read to you a, a transcript of a broadcast uh, and see whether that corresponds with the description you just gave us. This is document E3-117. It's a transcription of a, of a broadcast that is attributed to uh, the voice of NUFC, clandestine, dated the 26th of February 1975. It's one of the documents that we sent you, uh, Mr. Shamberg, in, in preparation for the hearing. I'm going to give the ERNs first and then read two excerpts. Khmer is at 00242308. French is at 00281432. And English is at 00166772. Mr. President, with your permission, we can also display that on the screen for, for the public because we have it in, in the Khmer language. I, I will read it for you, Mr. Shamberg. Thank you, Mr. President. If the AV unit could assist us with uh, displaying the Khmer version. Mr. Shamberg, it reads as follows. Title, Q Sampan chairs NUFC Congress session communicate issue. Voice of NUFC in brackets clandestine in Cambodia to Cambodia, 11.30 GMT, 26 February 1975. I'm going to read two extracts, both on the same page. First, quote, on 24 and 25 February 1975, the Great National Congress held its second session in an area of the liberated zone under the chairmanship of Mr. Q. Sampan, RGNUC Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of National Defence, and CPNLAF Commander in Chief. Number paragraph one. Concerning the seven traitors in Phnom Penh, the National Congress has decided as follows. Traitors Longol, Serik Matat, Sonyoktang, Cheng Hang, Intam, Long Bore, and Sustainer Fernandez are the chieftains of the traitors and ringleaders of the treacherous anti-national coup d'etat which overthrew the independence and peace and neutrality of Cambodia. Then skipping one sentence, quote, on behalf of the NUFC, RGNUC and CPNLAF, the National Congress declared it absolutely necessary to kill these seven traitors for their treason against the nation and their fascist, corrupt, criminal acts and precedented in Cambodian history. Can I ask you first, are these the seven traitors that you mentioned just a moment ago? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, and is this uh, a broadcast you heard at the time or is it consistent with broadcast you, that you heard at the time? Uh, I myself never heard uh, personally heard the broadcast, we saw these uh, was uh, the intended, apparently intended fate of these seven traitors or this decision, uh, was that something that you knew uh, in the months or weeks leading up to the 17th of April? Yes. Yes. And, and uh, there was a lot of talk about it. Thank you. Now, as I said, we're going to move to the events that followed uh, your arrest and um, the, particularly the, the treatment 
that you describe in your diary of certain officials of the Khmer Republic regime. First, if I can look at page, this is at pages 66 to 67 of your diary. ERN 00898274425. There is a, a, a broadcast that you describe. And it is, you describe essentially the, the interruption of the radio broadcast by a communist spokesman. And you say the following. The broadcast was interrupted by a communist spokesman who said abruptly, quote, we did not come here to talk. Later, insurgent broadcasts said, we enter Phnom Penh not for negotiation, but as conquerors. We have completely defeated the clique of the traitor or no. We therefore call on all commanders of the traitor units to lay down arms and surrender. Any soldier who refuses shall be severely punished. And then the next broadcast, you describe as follows, quote, another message broadcast several times invited, quote, all ministers and generals who have not run away to come and meet with us immediately at the Ministry of Information to help formulate measures to restore order, end of quote. Can I ask you uh, first that broadcast in relation to uh, all ministers and generals being invited to go to the Ministry of Information. Is that something you heard yourself or is it something you heard from other people? Uh, I, uh, I got that from uh, a man who I, who I hired to listen to the radio that day. Well, I was out in the streets. This is a day when they, they came into the city. He was a teacher at the university. He took this quote down. And he read it to the audience. And in fact, it's one of the last things he did because he came back to the hotel and then he came to the hotel and then he came back 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 Okay. Um, I'm going to now move on to uh, your description of what, what happened, what you witnessed at the Ministry of Information. This is at pages 69 and 70 of the diary. And It continues on to 71 as well. Um, the ERN in English is 00898277 and the following two pages. You say the following on page 69. Quote, we head for the information ministry because of the earlier broadcasts asking high officials of the old regime to report them, when we arrive, about 50 prisoners are standing outside the building, which seems to be the insurgents' temporary headquarters. Among the prisoners are Brigadier General Lon Nol, younger brother of Marshal Lon Nol, Brigadier General Chim Chun, who was close to the marshal, other generals and cabinet ministers are also there, very uneasy, but trying to appear calm. Now, can I ask you first, 
I'll start with a different question. Um, were you able to personally recognize these generals uh, and cabinet ministers, these people that you knew uh, previously as people holding these positions in the Khmer Republic regime? Anything that you know, I don't know who got killed. I know that the people 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 who got and he had stayed in the country, and a lot of people had suggested he leave with his family. And he didn't he And he was and he was killed. And I spoke with him uh, at that building. Well, and we'll come, we'll come to that conversation in a moment. Um, You, you describe uh, the rest of the scene, and I'll, I'll read the passages so everybody is aware of, of um, what is contained in the diary. On page, this will be page 70 in your version, Mr. Schamberg. Quote, after a few minutes, a man with a bullhorn lines up the prisoners into three groups, military, government officials, and civilians. We newsmen were also lined up to one side. An officer, he seemed important and was probably a leading general, though his black pajama uniform bore no markings, and he declined to give his name, stepped forward and made an extremely conciliatory speech to the prisoners. He said that they were he said that there were only seven traitors, that other officials would be dealt with equitably, and he asked for their cooperation. You, you then actually spoke to this uh, military leader according to, to the diary. Can I ask you first how many soldiers did you see uh, securing uh, these three groups and dividing them up, as, as you just described in, in that diary. Read. Uh, uh, ten to fifteen of uh, troops. Uh, 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 they kept circling these groups. Thank you. For the avoidance of doubt, um, were, were these uh, Khmer Rouge troops? Uh, was this a Khmer Rouge commander? Thank you. You then describe the conversation this military leader had with journalists. And you say the following, quote, as the conversation continues, one man steps forward and quietly asks a French newsman to ask the insurgent leader if the prisoners here today or other Cambodian officials can leave the country if they wish to. A few moments later, the newsman gets a chance to ask the question. The military leader laughs, laughs softly. Quote, it will depend on the government, he says. They will make the regulations. He says he is only a military leader, adding that some of the top political 
and governmental leaders are not far from the city, but they had led the military enter first to organize things. Is that an accurate summary of what happened? The state, this statement that was given by the military leader that decisions will be made by the government. That is accurate. I was on the one side of that building. I certainly know all that. Thank you. The next uh, event that happens is the arrival of, of Long Beret. And you describe it in the following terms. Quote, while we talk, Long Beret arrives. His wife had, has driven him up in their Mercedes. The first thing he does is walk over to one of the ranking insurgent officers and grasp his hand for a long time, wordlessly. He was dressed in an aqua polo shirt and tan trousers, and he looked terrible. His eyes were puffed into slits. Perhaps he has been crying. He and Sirat Matak are the only two of the seven traitors marked for execution who have not fled the country. He had been articulate on the telephone last night. Now he is having difficulty speaking. I tried to ask him some questions, but he can only mumble yes, no, and thank you. So conversation is impossible. Can you describe for us what else happened once he arrived and greeted the Khmer Rouge officer and you attempted to have a conversation with him? What, what, what happened to him next? Uh, uh, I, I can't. Uh, I can't say. Uh, they later uh, it was at that time when, after I had spoken to him and told him how brave I thought he was. Uh, and, uh, I began to feel uh, 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 nervous. Let's not get arrested again. And my, my, went through my head. So we left and uh, went back to the hotel, grabbed some uh, clothes and, uh, and some food we had. Thank you. Food. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. 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 And does it now include Long Beret? Were you able to observe what happened to his wife who had driven him to this location? A few days later, she drove up to the, the, uh, the gate of the French Embassy, and she asked to see a, a United Nations uh, man who was inside the, uh, the, the compound. The compound. The compound. And, and he came to the door, to the gate, and she asked for asylum. And that, uh, uh, the infrastructure the the built by the 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 Told us all about 
ban từ chùa chùa môi nên nè nó rồi có phải gì nó cứ tha miền kia rồi thốt chết đòi xa tài quát nữa mà nay chú sắt cho cao dầm rạp phải gì rồi bảo một cô rụng nô làm nàng thạp về nhà sớm một cuốn now before we leave this these events at at the ministry of information I wish to uh, play you a, a short video clip, um, which is also on the case file. Uh, it's, it's from a documentary uh, called Pot, the Killing Embrace. Mr. President, the document number is E3 slash 2355 and the ERNs are V00172454. It's only a 40-second um, segment, video segment, and it has been uh, played in court. Uh, with your permission, Mr. President, I'd like to first play it in full to 40 seconds, and then we can look at the particular specific um, images. Now, Mr. Schamberg, it is a documentary, so it has a voiceover. I'm going to ask you to ignore the voiceover. Uh, it's not relevant for our purposes. Um, what is relevant is your evidence and the images that are shown. Um, so we will play the video first and see whether it uh, contains any images that you recognize. The AV unit can play it now. And in silence. The population has long been isolated, and there is nothing to change our children with blank expressionless faces. But are they not Khmer too? Surely they will not harm their own people. Similarly bewildered, the guerrillas are illiterate peasants, most of whom have never seen city streets or cars or modern appliances. But they have been indoctrinated to see city dwellers as parasites who've drained the wealth from the countryside, people who have failed the revolution. First orders, to round up and execute all those who are linked to the non-all establishment. Moments after this photograph is taken, this troop of MPs and bureaucrats are led to a nearby tennis court and massacre. Thank you, Mr. President. Now, Mr. Schamberg, um, Look, Schoenberg. If you were able to see that, can I first check, were you able to see that, uh, those images clearly? Yes. There was, in the final seconds uh, of that video, there was a panned shot from right to left, uh, which showed a number of people standing. Uh, is that a location that you, that you uh, can identify? No, not really. I'm going to um, just show it to you on the screen and see um, if, if, if it does refresh your memory. If it doesn't, we will move on quickly. If I can ask the AV unit to just play from the video again from second 36 to, to the end of the video, see if that so that we can just all see that again. ដើម្បីយើងបានឃើញទាំងអស់គ្នាគឺពីចំណុចAfter this photograph is taken, this troop of MPs and bureaucrats are led to a nearby tennis court and massacre. That was a little bit later than, uh, than we wished, but um, does it in any way um, refresh your memory? Is it, is it a, a, a gathering event you saw? I myself didn't see such an event, but there really is only one place to play tennis, and I'm not really sure that that is the name of the game. I'm trying to think of the name of the club. 
ហើយក៏មានអាងហើយទឹកនៅទីនោះផងដែរគឺសូមអរគុណខ្ញុំមិនអាចនិយាយថាកន្លែង in the later days. And that's helpful. Thank you. While we're dealing with the fate of um, the senior officials of the Khmer Republic regime, um, I'd like to fast forward in time to the 19th of April, uh, an entry in your diary, which is at page 82. And you say the following. So at this stage, you are in the French embassy, of course. And you describe what you, what you saw and heard. Quote, at about 4.30 p.m., a loudspeaker truck passes the embassy two or three times, blaring the message, there are still traitors and super traitors in the city. We must look for them. We think it's ominous that they're doing this in front of the embassy. And I'll stop there. I'll move on to page 85 and read another passage which relates to the 20th of April. You say the following. Quote, yet the Khmer Rouge do come for certain persons today. The high officials who have been hiding here, at 2.30 p.m. in a dismal drizzle, a squad of heavily armed soldiers pulls up to the gate in a jeep in a sanitation truck. There is some talk with Dirac at the gate, and then he goes inside. Within minutes, the ones they want start coming out. There are a dozen including some women and children. ជាអតតាចារិកមួយគ្រួយគោរពជាវិសាសន៍សម្រាប់ហងបុនយូរ the prisoners are put in the open back of the sanitation truck. For several minutes, they just sit huddled there in the rain. Then, a few minutes past 3 p.m., the truck and the jeep slowly pull away from the embassy, like a funeral cortege. Were these events that you personally observed the um, surrender of Sirik Matak and, and Hong Bornhor as well as You describe them as the ones they want. Um, can you tell us why you use those, those words? The ones they want. Yes. 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 It's, it just comes from watching what took place. The people inside, the people inside, the people inside, the people inside, the 
Can you get the clean house that can be available in your man? Can you get the clean house that can be available in your man? Can you get the clean house that can be available in your man? Can you get the clean house that can be available in your man? Can you get the clean house that can be available in your man? Hồi chập nụng vào dùm nụn, điều đã làn trên từ. Cứ kê quát bàn lực là ông Pi Pô Rốt Cầm Bù Chia đài bùm miên lịch khách bằng chạc Pi Bò Rốt Tê. Trừ tại chạc trên Pi Sàn Tù Đi Rá. Cô Thuộc Chị Nạc Tô. Lời sắc nâng nông dùng kìm lưu lưu tìm Pi Phong Đài quát khuyên tìm nông lọ ó. Đi Rá bàn nì dì thà nợ bê đầy dương thua đủ chứ này bàn này thà nơi bề đại dương tập đạp nẹt nó ở hồi bộ kê đã chân bị thàn tù nó bà dân dễ dương đã tập đạp kê ở chân bị thàn tù chẳng dương mình lên trên mình nút tê If I can now look at a document that we sent you a copy of It's a telegram from the French Embassy that relates to these events Thank you for your time 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 This is document number D199-26.2 It's a French embassy telegram dated 18 April 1975. It's a one-page document. Uh, Mr. President, with your permission, I will read from the telegram and see if, uh, the, uh, if the document can assist us. Thank you. Mr. Schamberg, as I said, it's dated the 18th of April 1975. Uh, it's ordered by Dirac, signed by him, uh, and it, it reads as follows. Subject political asylum. I am referring to my telegrams number 586, 587 and 594. Following ultimatum from city committee, I am compelled in order to ensure the security of our compatriots to include in the list of persons present at the embassy quote, uh, number one, Prince Sirik Matak and two of his officers, number two, Princess Mom Manivong of Lao origin, third wife of Prince Sihanouk, her daughter, her son-in-law, and her grandchildren. Number three, Mr. Ong Bon Ho, President of National Assembly. And number four, Mr. Luong Nao, Minister for Health. Barring express an immediate order from the department requesting me to grant political asylum, I will be compelled to turn these names in within 24 hours. Mr. Schamberg, do you recognize um, any of these names apart from the two individuals you've already mentioned? I, uh, I, mentioned, I know uh, some of the, the family's uh, names, but I've never met them. And, uh, and my eyes... Really were on Sirik Matak. And, uh, because Sirik, Sirik Matak had, had uh, a few days earlier, or maybe a day earlier, he had sent a message to. Uh, I forget it was the president or Kissinger. I'm not sure which. Of those saying that you are abandoning us, that you said you would help us, that 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 you would help us. So my gun, that they slow, no pay day, got that change the back of the vein, no good hack, got short around. And he was stiff and straight, and I got your own tongue, I'm not determined to 
Thank you. Um, in the telegram, there is a reference from there is a reference to an ultimatum from a city committee. Can you help us with, with what that may relate to? Uh, you also mentioned a, a committee in in your diary. Do you know anything about this this body? I'm going to um, show you, with the President's permission, a photograph and see if you recognize uh, individuals in that. Uh, Mr. President, this is E190.1.307. It's a Newsweek magazine article uh, dated the 19th of May 1975. Um, it is not authored by Mr. Schamberg, but it includes um, uh, references or summaries of his descriptions of the events. Uh, with your permission, I'll, I'll uh, show a, a photograph from that article to the witness. Thank you. The photograph is really only um, relatively clear in the English uh, version, and that is at Mayor, uh, ERN, English ERN 00445261. And I'm going to uh, ask my assistant to display that on the screen uh, for us, with your permission, Mr. President. Can I ask whether you uh, have a copy before you, Mr. Schamberg? If you can just give us a moment um, to locate it here and, and display it for the judges and, and everybody in the courtroom. It's a famous picture. I don't, but I never met the man. Okay, we have that image now ready to display. Um, the if the AV unit could assist us to uh, show it on the screens for everybody in the courtroom. The caption says, no sanctuary. Hong Bon Ho is ousted by the French. Can I ask you first whether you recognize that individual? Uh, is that Hong Bon Ho as far as you recall? I've seen that picture. I not see the event. Friends of mine met him. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on from that uh, particular photograph. Dealing with um, uh, these events, again, uh, removal of uh, senior Khmer Republic officials from the embassy. Um, you provide further descriptions at pages 95, 96, and 97. Uh, again, in your diary, the English and the following pages. You, you're describing here a, a conversation you had on the 23rd of April with a, a, a Khmer-speaking French businessman who had attended some of the negotiations with the Khmer Rouge or between the Khmer Rouge and the embassy officials. And 
These are some of the things that, that he reported to you. Quote, the Khmer Rouge say they are still cleaning out military people from the old regime who have gone into hiding in the city, which is why this zone is still under military and not political control. A little bit further down on the same page, you say, quote, he says we have lost a week toward our evacuation because of the time it took to extract the big fish like Sirik Matak from the embassy. And a little bit again further down, three paragraphs down, quote, he says the Khmer Rouge refer to the people still hiding in the city as, quote, wild rats. The Khmer Rouge are much less suspicious of the embassy, he says, now that those hiding in the embassy have been turned over. Can you confirm for us that that was the information you received that, uh, from this man, from the discussions he took part in, that searches had continued for Khmer Republic officials? And there's another quote, um, or rather another passage on the next page, uh, quote, the Frenchman says that when the large main group of Cambodians left the embassy two days ago, they were taken to the municipal stadium where, quote, the important people were weeded out and taken away in trucks, and the others were then allowed to go up the road. He has the impression, which we all share, that the Khmer Rouge had a very good network of informers and agents in the city long before their victory. Do you recall whether that description he gave about the weeding out of important people from the trucks um, that had left the embassy? Um, do you recall if that's something that, that he uh, had been told or heard in the meetings? Uh, I, I can't vouch for that. Uh, I really don't know if that actually happened. And, uh, a lot of things probably did happen in those early days, but I didn't know uh, anything about that. And, uh, and uh, just as a, uh, a, 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 let's say, a guiding uh, event. Oh, yeah, Cambodian stringers, like photographers, and so forth. We add our young, yeah, Embassy a day before uh, the Sri And they they just wanted to get out alone, and they didn't want to be in a big group. And, uh, and that was, that was prime, you know, his sort of sensory organs being right again. Uh, I don't know how it relates to that. Uh, to what did this man tell me? Thank you. Thank you. With respect to the um, departure of the other Cambodian nationals um, from, from the compound. Uh, while we're discussing that, I'll just read to you another brief passage from the book, from the diary, pages 83 to 84, English ERM 00898291 to 2. This is an, an April 20 entry, so it, it occurs a little earlier in time. Uh, and the reason I'm reading it here is it provides some context to the departure of the Cambodians from the embassy. And you've touched on this a little bit. Quote, at about 7.30 a.m., there is bad news. Members of the embassy staff start moving around the compound, telling Cambodians without French papers 
that they must leave and join the trek into the countryside. We'd like to help you, but there is no way, one Frenchman said to them. We can't take you to France. If you stay here, there could be trouble. Two paragraphs down, you say the following. A little later, we learned that the French advice to the Cambodians was the result of new directives from the Khmer Rouge. In the latest meetings, they have told the consul Dirac that they no longer consider this an embassy, but merely a regroupment zone for foreigners, which ruled out the possibility of asylum and made the Cambodians' departure essential. Can you uh, assist us with these developments um, with respect to the embassy being deemed a mere recruitment zone? Um, what were you told about that uh, by Dirac or others who had communicated with the Khmer Rouge? Uh, I think that the, the paragraphs you just read Dirac obviously felt terrible about it. Dirac mean a rum month by Jetain, a penu, but I got me to Mr. So he and he didn't, his government didn't allow him to give asylum and the government wouldn't recognize him as having the right to do it. Um, and from what you were able to observe, with the exception of those that were able to, that had foreign passports, um, did all the Cambodians uh, leave the embassy in the following days? Not exactly all. Some of them uh, hung around and thought that they might be able to uh, hitch a ride on the convoy. With the help of François Bizeau, and the archaeologists who were there, they got a lot of help. The first convoy, uh, in the dark, and so people couldn't tell colors of skin and so forth and so on, he helped people climb over the sides of the truck instead of coming up the back, and I don't know how many, but there are another one, and there are other women. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm going to move on to a new topic. Is this a good time to break? Thank you, Mr. President. ไปเลยนี่ดอลลาร์เปลือกสำหรับไทยทรังไห้เอาอย่างไรประกาศสำหรับจากปีปีที่จะเติร์ดโหดทำเอาหมวยนั่งสามสิบปีที่เดือนเ
បាទលោកប្រធានខ្ញុំស្ដាប់បានច្បាស់ហើយបាទខ្ញុំនឹងត្រៀមគ្រូនរួចរាល់នៅម៉ោង